What's up everyone, how's it going? This is Waj. Hope you guys are all doing well. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about the Intel Xeon E5 2670. Now this is a chip that's a couple of years old now, but if you look on eBay and a couple of other used uh, sites, you can find this for a, a crazy, tremendous deal for under $60 is what I personally paid for. And this is pretty darn amazing because this chip used to retail for over $1,500 and it's a full eight core chip with 16 threads. So it has hyper threading enabled. And basically if you have the right compatible motherboard with the first generation socket LGA 2011, you can utilize the chip to the full extent. So what we're gonna do is take a look at the performance results uh, for the E5 2670 chip and see how it compares against other popular Intel based uh, CPUs that you can get right now for both our productivity related applications and gaming. And eventually we're gonna build a pretty remarkably priced system around this platform. So if you're interested, let's get right into it. Now the Xeon E5 2670 was first introduced in uh, 2012 and it went all the way up to 2015 before it got discontinued. Now just going over some of the uh, brief specifications about the E5 2670 chip, it has uh, 20 megabytes of CAS, it's based on a 32 nanometer platform, it has 8 physical cords with 16 threads because it has hyper threading enabled, the base clock frequency is uh, 2.6 gigahertz and it can turbo up to uh, 3.3 gigahertz the tdp is uh, rated at 115 watts it can support 384 gigabytes of memory so plenty of expandability for the future and based on those very impressive specifications uh, i would definitely say that this is probably uh, the deal of the century at uh, under 60 dollars now probably one of the biggest obstacle of getting one of these chips is going to be finding a motherboard that's reasonably priced now this thing is going to support the first generation lga socket 2011 so uh, there's definitely a lot of server boards that you can choose but if you're just looking for consumer base uh, motherboards uh, you're probably going to look into the x79 chipset now i got pretty lucky and found an asus sabertooth x79 motherboard for uh, just under 130 dollars i think for just general computing needs and uh, certainly high-end gaming uh, this platform is still very very relevant you have plenty of usb 3.0 connections full pci express a 3.0 support as well as eight uh, dims for ddr3 memory so you can get a little bit of a deal on your memory as well and not have to pay for the ddr4 spec which is uh, definitely going to be good if you're on a budget now, i did do some performance tests with this processor and a motherboard combination as well as uh, the cooler master hyper t4 which is an excellent cpu cooler that retails for way under the 30 dollar mark and uh, in terms of overclocking this uh, processor wasn't really designed uh, to basically be pushed in any way so we we really didn't mess around with the uh, clock settings too much. We just bumped it a tiny bit to get it to turbo up to 3.4 gigahertz. Anything beyond that is pretty darn unstable. And I did also want to uh, compare this processor with uh, two very popular gaming slash productivity processors from Intel, the 6700K and the 6800K. So let's get right into the performance results. The first thing I did is just do uh, the standard Cinebench R15 benchmark. And uh, here you're taking a look at the results of the E5 2670 compared to the uh, stock frequencies of the 6700K and the 6800K. If you didn't know, the 6700K is a quad core chip with eight threads and the 6800K is a six core chip with 12 threads. So even though our uh, E5 2670 has uh, technically more cores than the other two, since uh, both of those processors uh, can be uh, definitely overclocked a lot higher than what we have it tested for right now, now you still find that there's a slight performance uh, difference between the 6700K scoring a tiny bit lower than our 2670 and of course even at stock frequencies the 6 core 6800K is slightly faster than our uh, E5 2670 chip. Furthermore taking a look at the Geekbench 3 benchmark you can see that in terms of the single core performance uh, the E5 2670 chip is lacking far behind both the 6700 and 6800 
100k respectively. On the other hand, in terms of a multi-core performance, you have a fairly respectable results, just scoring around 18,000 points uh, compared to 16,000 points on the 6700k, and it's a slightly below the 6800k, which scored around 19,000 points. Now, in terms of productivity-related tasks, I basically rendered out the same After Effects motion graphics project, and I just measured out the, the render times, and here you can see that we're getting excellent results on our E5 2670. Now we can finally utilize all those cores properly. Uh, it rendered the entire project in 5.7 seconds versus uh, 7.2 seconds on the 6700K, and the 6800K was slightly faster than both of them at 5.4 seconds. Uh, the same thing goes for uh, Premiere Pro running out a 4K uh, project. Uh, it basically took around 4 minutes, 2 seconds on our E5 2670 versus the 6800K did it in uh, 3 minutes, 54 seconds, and 4 minutes, 18 seconds was the time on the 6700K. Last, when it comes to the gaming performance, paired with the GTX 980 Ti from PNY, uh, we basically fired up the synthetic benchmark for Grand Theft Auto V, and the 6700K yielded the fastest results, mostly because it has the fastest individual core clock speed. And because uh, the individual cores on the E5 2670 chip isn't as fast as the other uh, processor cores on the other chips, uh, you are going to find that there's a 2 to 3 percent uh, decrease in terms of overall average frame rate based on this synthetic benchmark. But if you take a look at Unigen's uh, Heaven benchmark, uh, basically with the exact same scenario, you are noticing that our uh, E5 2670 chip actually performs uh, just as well as the other two processors. So it really depends upon which uh, type of games you play and how they utilize uh, different uh, clock speeds on uh, different cores. But really on that guys, that's really, as you can see from the performance results even though it's not quite as fast as some of the current generation lineup of intel processors especially when it comes uh, to gaming it's still going to be an absolute killer deal especially for the uh, price range now uh, check out the links in the description down below you'll find some ebay uh, related links where some of these processors are available as well as some motherboards uh, again it's going to be kind of a challenge to find the right motherboard at a competitive price uh, considering uh, these cpus are going for such a ridiculous deal right now but if you can find the CPU and a motherboard for a reasonable price, I would definitely recommend building any kind of system around it since it's so capable and has so many different modern amenities that you would expect from a, a current generation PC. But really, other than that, thank you so much for watching. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you like this video and stay tuned. We're going to eventually build a system around the E5 2670 chip. So if you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you're doing so. But really, thanks again for watching. We'll see you later. Take care.